maybe a decent like 25-ish. But yeah, we started off with just a $250 beater. It was all rusted and on the left you can see some of the rust, the rust spots and it should have some seat belts, but we're gonna, we didn't need to install those. We just, we just need to get it running for the whole project. But yeah, so we just started with a rusty beater, tore it to pieces, rebuilt it, repainted, and got it up and running again. And I've just been uh, recently interested in automobiles, and I went to the CRTC, and I just, I just like how there's so many intricate parts that actually work together. It's, it's almost like a society in a sense, too. Like so many intricate parts that work together to, to function as one. Like you start with the, the potential energy in the gas tank with the gas, and then the gas is brought through the fuel lines from the fuel pump into the tank, into the, uh, the engine, and it is combusted, and then the kinetic energy is brought out of it and put straight into the wheels. And so, driver's ed is kind of like where I'm going with uh, vocational schooling. Because you have some, some in-class learning, and then you also get some experience on the road. Now imagine taking the driver's ed test without getting any experience on the road. That would be quite a pain. <laughs> but yeah, there's some things that like you learn, like I myself learn better with a little bit of hands-on experience and some learning in the class. And I was gonna talk about vocational schooling today and that's just, that's how it is. Like at the CRTC, they have the same concept. You have a few days in, in the classroom learning, learning through the textbook and the teacher teaching in front of the classroom on the projector. And then the other few days, you work on like engines and actually get some hands-on experience. Like my first year at the CRTC, we we got an engine for, I think it was like 50 bucks, it was like a, a beater. And he would, uh, Mr. Mayock, my teacher, he would explain like the parts and how all the engine works together and how it just like functions as, as one and then you would go into the shop and actually work on it. And I just, myself, I learned better that way from learning from my own mistakes and just moving on with it. And so here's just some more pictures of the go-kart. And yeah, so what I was explaining is a mix of in-class and hands-on experience. But you also have to, you have, to have the, the drive to like really do it. Like you have to love learning and love actually what you do. It's like when you get a career out, and out after high school, you have to actually love what you do. That's why many people go to college for it too. I mean, if you're spending loads of money, then you might as well actually love what you do. But, I mean, I'm kind of encouraging, like, rather than just going to a college and sitting down learning, actually go to, like, a technical college where you get hands-on experience and you also learn in the classroom. So it's a mix of both, and it actually helps sometimes when you're applying for jobs because they know you have the experience, like, with the hands-on experience, like, say you're applying to be, like, a doctor. I mean, you're not always sitting at a desk. You're not always just writing papers, you're also working on patients and helping out your patients. And so about vocational education, I stated that it was, it's basically like some hands-on experience and some in-class learning, but it's also uh, like for CRTC, where I'm going this year, for the second year in automotive, we, we get like a week where we go to internships and learn in like an environment, a job-like environment. And that's partially what vocational schooling is. You, you actually get educated in the job field that you might want to go into. And I can explain more with like the European style, how many uh, European countries are doing is, you will go into like normal schooling like, like this, and then you'll go into like a vocational school, of uh, something that you might be interested in. Not that you actually like want to do it for a, a career, but something that you might be interested in, so you at least have a plan B. And you take that for a few years, and if you really like it, you can even go for a college for that. And then get more trained in that field. But yeah, over in Europe, they're just, I mean, you still do vocational schooling as kind of a, you know, like a learning experience over there. And you just, you just do it because it's fun, and you might even want to do it like the rest of your life. But uh, so, 
we have um, going to college involves like, I mean, you're gonna have a whole lot of debt after going to college, like going into some good colleges, but there are like some good benefits of going to college, of course. You, I mean, you get usually you get higher pay when you get a job, if you get a job, that is, or you might just go into a lot of debt, but I mean, it's worth it to go to college, because <laughs> it's worth it to go to college, but I'm just, I'm not saying anything against it, I'm just, I'm more of a learner of a, like, hands-on and also in the classroom, and I, I like to encourage people to go to more technical colleges than your average, like, just in a big hall of other people just sitting there listening to your professor talking. Because with a technical technical college, you get hands-on experience, and you, you actually learn the your field of pursuit that you love to, to do. And so, Mike Rowe, I looked at a few uh, talks about Mike Rowe, and he, he says there's this little uh, this poster that he had in guidance when he was, when, or that his uh, counselor gave him when he was in high school, and it says, work smart, not hard. But nowadays, it's work smart and hard. So you, you get a degree, you get your, your papers, but you also actually train in the field that you like you know, and get the hands-on experience. And right here, I, I love how it shows work smart, not hard, and then the, there's like a mechanic that's just like so down, like, ah, I wish I went to college. But I don't know, it's just, you might as well combine both and work smart and hard and just work well. And that moves on to the next topic of work ethic. And where I work at the Common Man, they actually are starting to introduce uh, work ethic. And work ethic is your willingness to work, like your willingness to work hard and just, sorry, language, work your ass off, basically. <laughs> but yeah, so it's really basically just willing to work, work as hard as you, you can and really put, put your own f best foot forward and willing to, to put it in for the company, even if they're not a big fan of the company, but it will help your, it will help your own standing too. And so, I mean, why should the company reward you if you're not working your hardest? I mean, it makes perfect sense. They're probably going to fire you if you don't work your hardest, or at least close to your hardest. And then that moves on to the, the final topic is basically just. It's all up to you where you want to go in the future. I mean, do you want to go to college? Do you want to go to workforce straight after high school? I mean, it's really up to you. But what I'm suggesting is that in the end, good things end up coming to those who work smart, hard, and really want to get where they want to go and just really put their best foot forward and work hard. And that's pretty much it.